we have in, in the Talmud, very typically, a four-dimensional structure that is in, in, in one way connects the remotest past with anything that happens today and everything that was in between as, as one living, living, changing entity that has, has an interaction not only between beginning and end, but each of the parts is interacting with the others. If it is any kind of a discussion, a discussion, it cannot be contained within a specific space. It has to, the, 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 and the element of time makes it from what, what one may depict as a table in a, in a, in a, in a school. A, a classroom in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, any certain time, you have to add to it the ever-changing picture of the classroom 10 minutes ago, 10 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. All these are, are not just a, a stable or, or, or a fixed pictures of situations. But in, in a way, they are in themselves, they are moving. So we have here, instead of a, of a, a three-dimensional stable picture, a four-dimensional one that is constantly moving and changing. In that, in that way, everybody that was, was or is or will be a participant is, so to say, seated at the same table and is participating in a big way or in a small way, according to whatever it is, in, in the discussion. In this, 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 this kind of a, a four-dimensional table uh, along which the discussions go, begins, it has always, uh, say, Moses is, sits perhaps at the head of the table, now, who sits at the very end of sits at the very end of the table? Always, it is me. I am always the one. I, not the personal I. I, the student. I am always sitting at the other end. But I am. I am interacting not only from one end to the other. I am interacting with everybody that is there. It is possibly not always a polite a polite discussion that I speak only with my clothes, with, with the neighbor on my left and right hand, but I'm talking all across the table, sometimes through, say, six or seven generations, but still it is done in this way. That is, incidentally, the, the reason for the very common, very, the usage in, in, in Jewish learning, in which we usually quote the sages, the, the, the scholars of the Talmud, not in the past tense, but in the present tense. We, we, we would say about the sages, Hillel says, Shammai says, Rabbi says, Rav Ashi says, Rashi says, Rabbeinu Tam says, because in a certain way they're still speaking. They are still speaking because I have somehow the right to ask them questions or to differ or to say that I don't understand you or uh, how can you, how can you uh, compare what you said with, with something that your neighbor is saying or with somebody that, that is saying, say, uh, at, you, at, you, at the same table a thousand years back or forth. Because all these is virtually a, a continuous living entity that, that goes on and on as much as, as, every, as, as every, every generation or every, every event of learning is, is concerned in, in some way. 
Every event of learning is a continuation of the same process. Some of it becomes, so to say, ingrained. Some of it becomes also a part of those, not only for, for myself at the time, but it becomes a part of the ongoing, ongoing uh, create, creation of the book, which is going on and on. I mentioned that the Talmud proper was finished about, uh, say, 5th, 6th centuries. The, there is a statement which is true, uh, actually, but, but has a far more reaching meaning, that is that the Talmud was never signed. The Talmud was never finished. In fact, the book, the book didn't have a, a date that you can fix that the book was, has been finished. The book was, in, in a certain way, left in, in, a, in a stage. It is not finished in, in, in the way that it is that that you can fix a time in which the deed has been done. Uh, well, again, the, the the best thing to compare it with is is a human life. There are indeed things that are finished. Death is one of the of the of the night of the of the very clear ways in which a life is finished, but. When is a life finished when I'm living it? There are stages that I can later, sometimes later on, define. But basically, they are, they are moving from one to, to the other. When is childhood finished? I can make all kinds of arbitrary dates for it, but it doesn't have a real date. In that sense, the Talmud is not finished because the Talmudic creation under different names is, is, is going on. Is still changing, and in fact, the Talmud of today, as it is say printed today, is in more than more than one form reflects that four-dimensional entity in in uh, in so many different ways. When you have uh, when you have a page, a page of the Talmud. Uh, in or in every every possible edition of the book, you have you have there uh, something that that contains in itself by itself uh, a fair amount of 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 material. If 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 this, which is put put in, in again in traditional editions, is put. Is the, uh, that's at the center, bigger letters and so on. That reflects the Talmud proper, which is basically Hebrew Aramaic of the uh, from the from the second to say to the to the to the sixth century. On the side of it, you have you have the commentators. The commentators are interacting with the text. They are a part of the text. So. Here you have one of them, say Rashi, which which lived about around the 11th century in North in France. Here is another super commentary that involves the Talmud and Rashi in a, in a, in another in another format, and this this format was done 200 years later. Again, roughly speaking, because none of these things is was finished at a, at a certain at a certain time. So, so here you have something that is done two hundred years of discussion of interacting with with the, the former scholars, the contemporary scholars, new interpretations, new way of seeing it, new questions being asked. 